Welcome to Two Cents Short of a Dollar, the show where we give our two cents and keep it 100. We're your host. That's Mo Tiz. I'm Rue. Today, we got to talk about Anoya Inouye and Stephen Fulton Jr. Probably my worst prediction of the year. Um, wow. Stephen Fulton looked uh, really bad out there. So I know we, we were up at 8 a.m. in the morning watching the fight. Uh, tell me how surprised you are, if surprised at all. I wouldn't say I wasn't really, like, like shocked by it. I would just say I was probably... If any, it's probably more surprised with uh, Stephen Fulton's performance. Um, in a way, showed me things that I kind of already knew what he was capable of. Mm-hmm. And, and, I, and I, like I said before, my prediction, I felt like he was going to stop him probably in the 11th. I just thought that Stephen Fulton was just going to throw more combinations, was going to make it kind of a tougher fight than what happened. I was probably more surprised about the fact that it was damn near a shutout, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, in a way, arguably won every single round. Maybe you can give Stephen Fulton one round, right? And and then he stopped him, right? I don't think the stopping him stopping him is the surprising part. I think it's just him just making him look like fodder. You know yeah. what I mean? Like taking away his confidence. And I think it's really attributed to Stephen Fulton probably underestimating in a way. I think that's what it was. Underestimating his speed and his power. And I think that was really the crux of what was throwing Stephen Fulton off the whole night. So, yeah, I, I think the foot speed was very evident, and and no, anyway, it was able to step to Stephen Fulton really fast every time, land a shot, and then get out of range. Um, so, I, I think that's what was surprising to me too, how one sided it was. I think I gave Stephen Fulton round seven, which was the first round I gave to him. Then he got stopped in round eight, right? So, I just thought, you know, I, he, I know he's a technical fighter. I thought he was going to find ways, you know, in spots to keep uh, in a way off of him in spots. I expected it to be, you know, some some back and forth. But I, I thought Stephen Fulton, I didn't think he would be that gun shy. I thought there was a lot of opportunities where he could have possibly let his hands go. But it yeah. seems like he was just very, very hesitant. And then that was his ultimate demise. It just seems like he was fighting scared, to be honest with you. And that's just not a good combination against, you know, someone who's coming out there, you know, looking for blood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I definitely feel like it was definitely some level of failure, especially once because once they came out the gate, it seemed like Stephen Fulton was a bit confident, right? Like he came in, pressed forward a little bit. And I think it was it was this one shot that hit Fulton, and Fulton was like, like a bit like, oh, and I think at that moment he's like, Oh nah, the power mm-hmm. was real. And I think the speed was also like messing him up, messing up his timing, and he just couldn't and he he was just in disarray, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. And I think at that point, after the first round, Inouye had his card, and Inouye just started, at some point, started getting, I want to say sloppy, but he knew he had him, and he just started throwing punches, leaping at him. Yeah. You know, because yeah. he felt like he could take his punches, and he's like, I'm going to just start leaping at him and really break him down, you know? Yeah, he, so. he was doing some some wild things. One time, he even just, like, charged at him and threw, like, a four-piece combination uh, a la Deontay Wilder with the Euro step. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> no, so, it, it, you know, <laughs> something similar to that. And, you know, that just shows the level of confidence that one person has, but also how much they don't respect anything that you have to throw back, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I think as, as technical as Inouye is, right, I think he threw all of that out the window in spots and just like, I got this guy. I can do whatever I want because he's not going to be able to stop it. So, right. and you just seen the confidence growing and growing and growing. He was switching levels on Fulton. You could hear Fulton's coach in the corner yelling at him. Couldn't make out what he was yelling, but you could tell he was very furious. Yeah. Um, like I said, it just, he just looked, you know, obviously it's not starstruck because that's not what happened, but some that kind of level of freezing, you know, as if he was starstruck, you know, it was just like, whoa, nothing I'm doing is really working. And anytime something worked, it's like the fair set back in and he would back off of it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I think it was really like the jabs to the body and he just couldn't really like a reset him every time. And, and in a way set that, set that up from like the beginning mm-hmm. and then caught him with that overhand right to stun him in the eighth and then come over with the left to drop him. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I mean, I can tell you where anyway goes from here. He's by the end of the year, he's going to be two time undisputed. undisputed champion. Right. Yeah, but I, I guess I'm not even going to question it because <laughs> I'm not even going to question where Fulton goes from here because okay. I don't even know because I don't think he knows. I think he really needs to sit down for a while and kind of look himself in the mirror and kind of just 
assess this performance. You know what I mean? Um, because, you know, in a way conceded at pretty much everything, right? He let Fulton walk out second. He, he, he wrapped his um, hands the way that they wanted it to be wrapped. You know what I'm saying? He, he just knew in his heart of heart, I'm better than this guy. I'll give them anything they want because I'm going to beat this guy. And that's what he went out there and, and, and did. Well, yeah, he, he, he really, he really, yeah, he really showed. And, and I think he made more people of a, a believer in him mm-hmm. and he showed like, yo, I'm just not, you know, a Japanese man that could just hit hard, right? I got the IQ. I got the footwork, you know, I know mm-hmm. distance control. So, so I, I guess after he, cause we're all, we're all confident that he's going to become undisputed, right? Um, in his next fight. Um, if he goes up to 126, how do you think he fares at 126? Do you think he does well at 126? And what is the highest cap or weight class you think he can, you know, still find success in? I think I think he'll do well at 126. Um, I don't really think there's any, for lack of better terms, real killers at 126. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, you know. In a way, is what maybe five six. So uh, you know, I think the only thing that probably gave him trouble at one twenty six, anyone is like very very tall, and I don't think anyone is. I think is Ray Vargas. That's maybe like five ten or something like that. I'm not saying that he could beat in a way, but maybe length or something. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Someone would have mm-hmm. to have some kind of like large advantage. Uh, maybe one thirty. Maybe maybe one thirty. Just because you know, coming from one eighteen, we have to see how that power translates. I know the power is real, so it will jump up, you know, but eventually sometimes you just run into guys who take the shots better than others. So maybe 130. Um, I absolutely don't believe he can go to 135. I, I, I hear people thinking, talking about their dream fight is him and Tank. I even heard someone saying, you know, him versus Loma. I don't think he can go to 135. How about you? Yeah, I think 130 is the cap probably, to be honest. Even that's pushing it. Um, I think one thirty years old. Yeah, I think one twenty six. He can do fairly well at that weight division for sure. I mean, unless he pulls like the Manny Pacquiao, right? But that's mm-hmm. one person that was an eight division world champion, right? Um, he's halfway there for division, mm-hmm. right? But that's still tough to do. So I, I would say the cap definitely is one thirty. You know, um, for sure. Eight divisions would have to take him all the way up to 140, which means could you could you like imagine knowing anyway fighting, I guess, let's say Regis Pro Grade one day or two, you know, it just seems so far fetched. Yeah, it just seems so crazy, you know what I mean? But yeah, maybe he's an outlier like uh Mini Pacquiao, but that's all I got, you know. Yeah, 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 for sure. So um definitely like, comment, subscribe, tell us what you thought about the fight. Uh, were you disappointed? Was it exactly what you expected? Uh, like I said, I got it completely wrong. Like, I don't think I've been more more wrong. Obviously, you know, that's, that's the fun in this, that, you know, you have an opinion, I have an opinion. We get to bounce opinions off one another. Someone's going to be right. Someone's going to be wrong. I think that's what makes this all fun, you know, like typical barbershop stuff, you know. But I can't, I can't emphasize how wrong I was about this one. Yeah.